Good morning. Happy Monday. I have neural coffee in hand and it is perfect. All right, coming off a very solid weekend. Hope you had one as well, but a very busy Monday as usual. We're going to dig straight into today's Q&A. Uh, this is with Alec. Um, we we're talking about hands and feet and some similarities and such, and this led to Alec's question in regards to, to bunions, and, and we get into a little bit of, of how they form and, and a few things that we can do about them. Uh, the thing we, we want to recognize under these circumstances is, is that the reason that this, this situation arises, a bunion, in the first place is that we have a limitation in relative motion in one segment, and then we have to somehow produce more motion in another segment. And so in all cases, we will have to have ER for space, IR for force production into the ground, and that's what a bunion basically is. It's a place for us to, to apply an internal rotation. We're going to have to magnify an ER orientation as a, as a substitution for a lack of motion, and we're going to get bunion formation. And so um, we have a situation that will have to be either um, managed or we have a, a way to restore the relative motions and alleviate the stress upon the big toe in this case. So Alec, thank you so much for this question. Probably going to guide a lot of people um, and produce a lot of questions um, as to what to do under these circumstances. So again, very, very helpful. Everybody have an outstanding Monday and I will see you tomorrow. Uh, Alec, back to you. We have time. And it was the perfect segue, Thea. Thank you. So I guess, um, because I my question is about bunion. So now that you guys were talking about how the the uh -huh. the toe is not where it is because it's grabbing. Now right. I'm trying to like, is that literally why? Because if I remember correctly, that a bun that's what a bunion is, right? It's like it's a it's a toe that's trying to grab the ground. You see, you see my, you see my. Yeah, brain. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, so this, it, is, this is a thumb. This is a thumb that has done too much manual therapy. Okay. This is what it looks like, Jordan. This is what it looks like 32 years from now. That's what your thumb's going to look like, boss. <laughs> but I shouldn't treat you for it because it's an adaptation and that's going to take away your ability. Um, it's to... probably an undesirable adaptation because it doesn't really feel great all the time. Um, you know, it's like, it's like, this is why this is why you have to get really good with exercise selection because then you don't have to do as much manual therapy. <laughs> okay, I see, I see. Um, a bunion's a turn, okay? Yeah. Hang on. It's a turn and then it's a forced position without relative motion, okay? So it's not a normal, it's not a normal representation, okay? It's, an, it's, an, it's, a, it's a twist and a bend into... Um, and and I, when I say bend, I'm not talking about a joint bend, okay? I'm talking about connective tissue bend, okay? Um, yeah, it's an undesired adaptation. And and from a, like, a, what's the functional gain or like, what's the, the um, it's a replacement I, of the ability to capture it's an indication. The... It's an indication of where you're applying IR to the ground. Okay. Okay. Hang on. Let me help you. Yeah. You're taking a step forward and you land on your heel. Yeah. Okay. All right. You, you, so the rest of the foot's not on the ground yet. Yeah. Okay. As the foot comes down to the ground and you capture the medial foot contacts. So, so you go from the ER position to starting to superimpose IR. So this is where first met head and medial heel contact come into play. Got it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is the early representation, first superimposition of internal rotation on the ER. Got it? Yep. Okay. If you try to bring the tibia forward over the foot, what has to happen in the rear foot to allow you to translate the tibia forward? In the rear foot? Yes, sir. Um, I'm, I'm going to move from outside, like get lighter on the outside heel and heavier on the inside heel. Okay. So for that to happen without a compensation, there's, there has to be a movement that takes place in the rear foot. Can, can you, it, like a uh, calcaneus? Yeah. So, okay. So the subtalar joint is where the motion is occurring. <laughs> so you go from what it would be traditional supination to traditional pronation. Yeah. Okay. So that's an ER to IR representation yeah okay now i'm gonna 
fuse that joint. Okay. okay. I'm going to take away your ability to internally rotate the rear foot. Okay. You're still going to apply force into the ground, aren't you? But more distally. Because you know why? Because okay. if I take away that joint, if I take away that joint, you know what's going to happen? You're going to move very, very quickly over your foot. Yeah. Okay. But you're not going to go through internal rotation until you get to a joint that can internally rotate. Interesting. Interesting. So it's it's not a more distal. It's not a more distal first mehed. It's a it's a more distal subtalar. Well, you're 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 creating an undesirable substitution. So the subtalar yeah, yeah, yeah. is very well designed to do what it does, right? Yeah, like it's a great adaptation. Um, but if I take that away from you for any circumstance, you're going to find a way to apply internal rotation into the gram. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It's just going to happen somewhere else. Um, have you ever seen, have you ever worked with anybody with a, with a first metatarsal fracture? Nope. Okay. Well, let's think about this for a sec. But let's I'm probably, say, I'm, I'm someone who's on the verge of getting that regularly, I believe. Okay. So. Well, but so I have. Oh, I, cool. Yeah. Um, and, and they, they tend to run, they tend to run a lot. Um, so, so think about this for a second. Take an E-yard foot. Yeah. Okay. Somebody that, that would be accused of having a very high arch. Yep. And I, I want you to run on it without internal rotation. Okay. And I want you to keep running on it without internal rotation. And I want you to keep pushing down on that foot through that archway as hard as you can. Because you're going to run, you're training for a marathon. Everybody has to run a marathon once in their life to prove that they don't die. Um, but what would, what would a stress fracture of the first metatarsal represent under this circumstance? The end of maritime training. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. That would be the smart thing to do. That, it, usually yes. it usually doesn't stop people just FYI. Yeah, uh, yeah I know. But, but, but so what that but what that represents is that's where you're trying to get internal rotation yeah, 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 yeah. so you've taken away all the relative motion available in the foot and you go i'll just make a new joint i'll just keep trying to bend this bone in the wrong direction until it starts to come apart and then i will make a joint eventually if i let yeah. it go right yeah yeah and yeah. and and then you mention that's what happened when the subtalar joint is fused. You use the word fuse. Is it like I, inevitably I was, that, I was, I was, or what you mean? I was giving you an extreme. Of, okay, yeah, perfect, perfect. I was giving you an extreme to take away all other options. So I guess that in some cases, and that's where I get to make a judgment call. And if it's a good one, I'm a good coach. Um, as to is is there uh is there a chance of regaining what function from the subtailer and then based yeah. on that i guess i have in to in most cases yes in i got cases. i got so what do you do with someone that can't because i i you remember my my hey, uh so hang on hang on hang on hang on okay. yeah okay so if 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 literally okay um extreme example for making a point yeah uh somebody that's an above knee amputation yeah what do you do they can't get their they can't get their extremity to the ground so what do you do um is that a in a situation where the person would have a, a prosthetic yeah yeah you would teach okay that so person you create to get inner inner so I, contact. I create something that i create something that fills that space that allows the mechanics to come up from the ground yeah so if I have a foot that does not change shape, I have to provide a, a, a intervention. I have to provide an intervention that accommodates that space. So I would bring the ground up to the heel? Or I, so I put the foot in a position that gives me a greater adaptability. And then I have a shoe that has a construction that allows that to happen or an orthotic that allows that to happen. Okay. So you have to create the best case scenario under that circumstance. But so we're, we're things that things that are unchangeable. If somebody wants to do something with that situation, 
you have to try to create the best accommodation available, which might be, like I said, you change the shape of the ground relative to the body so that the body can have its greatest level of adaptability. Oh uh, yeah, I gotta recommend. Uh, I gotta so, get into. If you got somebody footwear. with a bunion, you got somebody with a bunion. That means that something that you wanted to move is not moving. You intervene to create movement in that thing that is not moving to take the stress off the thing that is moving too much now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you do the best yeah. you can. In some cases, you can't do it. In other cases, you can. 